was uh, <laughs> um, I am the creator, and you are. <laughs> Good morning. So, uh, this what year vehicle is this? 04. 04 Buick Rendezvous. Yeah. And this car has been back a few times for what code? I don't know the prior codes, but this one's the what? EVAP vent solenoid. PO446. Yeah, PO446. Okay. So, um, what is the description? Go in, go in there. Quick trouble codes. Uh, trouble codes. <clears throat> So, so my my this is loading up. Uh, if I do remember correctly, this came in with a uh, vent valve code originally, um, and then she was back a few months later with a vent valve code again. I think it was a circuit code. I don't remember. So I said I can't stand and I don't trust aftermarket parts. So I said let me switch brands and I tried another one. All right, so we tried another one, and I'm pretty sure it's been a while since she's been here. Uh, and now she's back again with a, for an oil change and the check engine lights on. So, in courtesy re-diagnosing this car. And well, it says uh, vent system performance. Well, and also uh, P1811 maximum uh, adaptive long shift, which is a transmission uh, code. Um, we're not really concerned with that, but we're going to make the customer aware of it. So we don't fix transmission problems. So the PO446, right, is saying evaporative emissions. EVAP vent system performance. It's not saying that the, the, the vent valve is the problem, it's saying there's a, a, a performance problem in the entire EVAP system is what it's saying. It, 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 the software has not, it's not as accurate as the newer ones are saying where the problem is lying. Um, in the newer systems, it says unable to bleed up fuel tank vacuum. Um, and that's in your newer cars. In the older ones, it just didn't have the diagnostic strategies, capability, or programming to say, hey, narrowing down, narrowing down how the area of failure. Um, so we went through a manual uh, override with the scan tool to activate the vent valve, which we know is new, it's turning on and off. So then I performed a visual inspection. I'm coming up to the purge valve and I'm saying, did we ever put a purge valve in this car? Even though it's not coded for a purge valve, because the purge valve circuit's working, and then at a closer look, you can see the line is all like sandy and, and hold that light, sandy and crappy. And then I just put my finger on it, and I'm gonna pull this fucker off. I can get it out, but you can see it split, see it? Just split wide open. So I can't tell if it's leaking vacuum, but this actually becomes porous, the rubber. Yeah. Um, and it'll actually won't be able to hold a vacuum um, even though there's no other code. So I'm gonna go with this is probably the problem where it's sucking closed because the rubber is so soft that it can't apply enough vacuum to the, the uh, fuel tank um, under command uh, because your EVAP system runs through a bunch of tests. It's under vacuum, then it's under pressure, then it's under vacuum, it's under pressure. Um, but I suspect that's our problem. So not. The moral to the story is, it doesn't necessarily have to be a vent valve. That's the issue. It could be something as simple. It could as be line. simple as a vacuum line, um, even though it's not causing any other codes than pointing at the whole other end of the vehicle where the vent valve is. And super older cars, they used to put the purge and vent up front. They don't do that anymore. All right, thanks for watching. All right, so let's get this.